Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the final word from Republic of Ireland 1, Switzerland 1, Euro 2020 qualifier. I'm joined by Gary Spain once again due to popular demand. And I'm here with John Kerr from the subreddit uh, Koi Big. Or slash Koi Big, that's it. Sorry, so uh, he's one of the moderators on that group there. So if you haven't checked it out, check it there. Some good discussions between uh, with the Republic of Ireland national team and all things pretty much Irish football. All yeah. things Irish football now. There's a, there's a League of Ireland subreddit as well and there we don't want to tread in their toes too much now. Uh, so it'll mainly be national team stuff, but it'll be for all the age levels for yeah. the women's team as well. Okay, so so check it out if you're on Reddit and if you're not, why not? Maybe make a Reddit and uh, like I did and uh, come <laughs> and check it out. But uh, yeah, on to uh, the, the Swiss game. You know, a decent point. Um, I suppose we'll, we'll kick things off with the lineup and we go back to our starting 11. So we accurately picked the team. Yeah, we did. Now, I don't think it was that hard to pick the team. I think most people would have predicted what we predicted, but we did. We got it spot on. Um, I got the prediction score predict the score spot on as well, <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. want to check back. Yeah. But um, obviously, we're still hoping for the win. Um, but given what transpired, it was... Uh, I was certainly happy with the point. Yeah, well, I suppose we were going to with that, with their team. Like we had, they had Samar and Gaul, Shah, Akanji, I'm not sure the other lad's name, um, playing centre back, uh, and Babu, Zakaria, Shaka, and Rodriguez was out left, and then they had Mbolo, Seferovic, who we thought was actually going to be out, and he didn't seem yeah. to be in the squad, and then they had Freuder as well, but. Ultimately, on RTE, it, it, it looked like they'd set up as a four three three, but that really wasn't the case. It seemed more of a four four two. I thought. Yeah, no, um, from the way I was at the match, uh, and it seemed like Mbolo was playing up front with Sheffield. Yeah, as well, yeah, exactly. Kind yeah. of playing off the shoulder of him, yeah. in the kind of almost a 10. Um, yeah, I think it was a very even game in a, in a weird way, in that I think we kind of, there was spells where we looked dangerous. There was probably more spells where they looked dangerous. Yeah. But I, I, I think in some ways we were unlucky. If we had a bit better finishing, we could have gotten the win. Yeah, but we, we started the game kind of, I thought, brightly. I mean, we pressed at them straight away. We had a corner within the first 30 seconds. We did, yeah. I mean, they seemed to panic a little bit. And, uh, yeah, we got the corner. But almost immediately, I think, after that corner, they pushed us right back. And uh, they pressed us high up the pitch. And I think we were... Um, I, I felt we were under the cosh from the first couple of minutes. For as long as I've been an Ireland supporter, though, that's the case. We we come out, all our goals are there in the first 10 minutes or the last 10 minutes, you know, and then there's that 70 minute block in the middle where we do absolutely F all, you know. Um, and I, I think we always start well on the front foot, but if that doesn't go our way, then, like you said, we can be under the cosh for there to Yeah, but I thought, we, I thought we defended better. We were talking about being under the cosh or whatever, but then we got back in it. Like, I think it was quite early on. We had a nice bit of play between Henrik and Robinson and, and, uh, Hendrick slides the ball in for McLean, then it creates a chance. Ultimately, you know, he couldn't really get the ball out from under his feet and they made a challenge. But, I mean, that was a bit of positive play that probably we weren't seeing previously, you know? I, okay. I, I kind of said to one of my mates when I was there, it's, ni- it's a nice difference in the Martin O'Neill era because our lads might not still be the best kind of, uh, in terms of implementing a passing style, so but at least they're trying now. You yeah. know, like, whereas there wasn't any attempt at invention now, there were some attempts at invention during the game. Now, it didn't always come off. They still aren't the most technically gifted team uh, in our group. But you can see now Mick is trying to get some kind of passing style going. Randolph is playing the ball short sometimes. Midfielder coming looking for the yeah. quick pass. Yeah, well, I find out that they, are, knocking, they are knocking it long when they need to as well. Like I remember yeah. Shane Duffy was getting the ball at one point. We did play out at the back, as you say. Mm. And I remember it came to Shane Duffy. He was just like, fuck this. I'm long. <laughs> yeah. but they, they, like, because they were pressing us too. And, you know... You say whatever you like about about uh, ourselves, you know, Switzerland are a very, very good side and you can see why they continuously are in the, you know, yeah. the, in the top 10 of the world. Yeah, but they're continuously the at rankings. tournaments, you know. I mean, are... yeah, they, they, they were they were at the last tournaments. They they got to the last four of the Nations League. I mean, they, they drew with England, lost on penalties, I think, in the third place mm. playoff. They put five past Belgium last November. So, yeah, they are they are a good side. Their, now, their goal was technically amazing as well. It was. And yeah. I, I think it was coming, actually. From, yeah. They had a few chances where their finishing probably let them down. Yeah, so, we'll, come, we'll come to their goal. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, so they are, but they are, they are better able to... To hold the ball. Now, I, I, I'd agree with the point. We do try and play more football than we did in the O'Neill re- regime. Um, we just maybe just don't have the, the enough quality. Now, what I did like was that um, when the ball went up to McGoldrick, I felt, I felt it stuck more often. Yeah. In, in, I felt kind of... In, uh, in the last campaign, maybe there was a lot of aimless balls out of defence and 
basically the opposition were coming straight back at us again. It seems as well as if we're getting some semblance of support up front as well, because what would have happened in the O'Neill and I think the Trapatoni areas as well is you would have had almost kind of eight or nine men sitting back. And then when the ball's booted long, your forward, whether that's your Kevin Doyle, your long, your keen, gets the ball, no one around, ball's lost easily. You're seeing now Robinson and McLean and Hogan when he was on and Horahan and Hendrick. Some of them are invariably coming up to to get that second ball, to get that third ball yeah. and keep momentum going. Yeah, I think actually seeding possession again straight away. Jeff Hendrick did that quite a bit. And for me, it was probably and it didn't seem to come across as much in the media. Maybe it didn't on TV, but. For me watching live, I thought he had his best game for us for probably since Europe. Yeah, well, actually, Liam Brady said after the game that he had a great first half, which he did. Um, second half, he kind of fizzled out. But I thought um, it was a case of just it, just tiredness. But there was a couple of key moments. Like, Enda Stevens, he got booked for a high foot, which was a high foot when you actually look okay. back. I didn't think in the stadium at the time yeah, it was. But watching it back, it was, it was a yellow. Because just ultimately, because he kind of put his head into it as well, but uh, it was it was quite high. It didn't look like it on the pitch, but it was. Um, and then, you know, there was that moment where, and this happened a couple of times, where they were uh, getting us on the counter-attack, and then Kyo made an absolutely brilliant interception to to make sure that we basically, if they were in, they would have scored, I, I believe, anyway. But uh, he, he was like a one-man machine there at that point, and he stopped them from getting, from getting in. And that, I think that was a continuous case. Uh, but for me, I thought... You know, Stevens didn't have his best game. I felt like the occasion got to him. Maybe first half, I think he did improve in the second. I thought Robinson yeah. as well. I thought the occasion a bit got to him. As yeah, well. no, I, I I was disappointed with Robinson's performance because I was hoping for a lot since he played so well with Sheffield United. He did have to sit out training and with a, a tight hamstring. And I see he's already gone. Dropped out of the gone, squad. Dropped, yeah. dropped out of the squad for, for Tuesday. So maybe that was affecting him. Maybe he wasn't quite 100% fit. Um with time I, I, I think yeah. as well it's important to note that with he does play higher up the pitch with um with Sheffield United and that I think the game against Chelsea it was himself and McGoldrick were playing in a four four two or a five three two a three five two. Yeah, he's definitely front, up with him. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas right wing maybe isn't his most effective attack okay. position from an attacking sense. I thought Judge actually when he came on to replace Robinson did an excellent job come up and down the pitch. He did yeah, and he defensive defensively as well yeah. as um going forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, just kind of going off still in the first half, the um, McGoldrick, obviously, speaking about him there, he obviously had that great run. He skips past the defender. And I think if he just shows a little bit more composure, I think yeah. maybe he got a bit too excited and he was like, oh, this is a chance to get in. Where real, in reality, he probably had a lot, I'd say, a, at least two more, more seconds. Yeah, yeah. I, I also think as well, uh, because I thought that myself the first time I watched it, but when you watch the replays, Robinson didn't fully commit. And I think that that's the problem is that he's not a natural striker. He's more of a maybe a, a winger, uh, winger slash striker. I think a, a born poacher would have stuck the foot in. Yeah, but there was actually two of them. So if, if McGoldrick had a, taken a, a, a couple of seconds extra, I think it was McLean was in behind or Hendrick, one of, one of them. And e- either or. So you would have had Robinson and, and uh, mm. McLean or Hendrick. I can't remember exactly who it was. Some with blonde hair and they had a 13 <laughs> of, or, or 11 on their back. So, um, But yeah, I think lacking that tiny bit of composure... But I think if we had had that composure, we could have even, I think, pulled off a win. Maybe, yeah. I mean, but they probably would have came at us more so. No, I I, 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 I thought we were, frankly, I, I thought we were very lucky to draw. I think Switzerland were the better side. I was delighted with the draw and they were the better side over 90 minutes. And I think I so, think but I think football been, yeah. in, in football, the best team doesn't always win over 90 minutes. No, but I think we were, I think we rode our luck enough to get a draw to be talking about not getting a win is a bit mm. unrealistic no, though. Yeah, well, well just in yeah. regards, because you, you're saying we were lucky, you know, there was countless times where we rode our luck and I suppose after the McGoldrick chance, there was a point again where where the Swiss were in the game and then the Stevens made a great interception yeah. and I think, you kind of look at, if that was Virgil van Dijk, you know, everyone would be raving about it like he did that time against Spurs, you know, it was similar enough to that position and, and uh, Stevens made the block and then, it was kind of from that point onwards, then going into half time, we were thinking, right, it's going to be, you know, nil all. But I think the McGoldrick and uh, ball into Robinson was just before half time, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure. So we were going into half time, a, a comfortable, you know, nil nil. And I suppose we were thinking at that point, getting a little bit of confidence from the McGoldrick chance, chance. but then saying, okay, well, we're going to need to start making more chances. But ultimately, 
and Seamus Coleman said this to us after the game, is that you know they were pushing on with their wing backs and ultimately forcing us all pretty much they, back. They, 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 they pressed they, us. They pressed us very high up the pitch. Yeah. I thought, and yeah, they, they, they pushed pushed their whole back. team by yeah. the keeper yeah. was in there. Yeah, like, yeah. I did think as well that that left them defensively vulnerable. I think that the points that we did catch them on the counter attack when McLean got the ball a couple of times out the left or McGoldrick held the ball up in the middle because they were committing so many men forward I did, did think that they were, they were vulnerable to the counter attack yeah, I think they yeah. are I mean they, they conceded three to Denmark in six minutes so I think uh, they, even when they put five past Belgium they still conceded two so they do concede goals and when we really press them yeah, they, 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 there are chances there, but I, I think as well, they, yeah. they own the ball so much as well. It can be it can be very difficult to to press them back. I mean, I didn't see the possession statistics, but I'd I say they're pretty horrendous. How, yeah. yeah, the thing is though, like I was saying about, you can see the kind of the semblance, the an attempt to play a bit more of a passing game than we have done under the last couple of managers. I think this will hopefully, if things stay the way they are with McCarthy's car, uh, current contract situation, hopefully this is going to be a nice precursor to the passing style that we're going to see under Kenny if we can if what Kenny has implemented with the under 21s yeah, stays I don't think that's going to change Kenny, yeah, yeah, Kenny will, will be the man so, he plays football that, that's the way he's been playing yeah, football in the I, League of I, Ireland I, I think well, if the yeah. players in this squad are yeah. at least trying to kind of play some form of a passing game that'll make the transition to Kenny's managerial reign a lot easier yeah, yeah. Anyway. well into the second half then and um, as I was saying you know or actually you were saying but Alan George then came on for, for Robinson and I thought he'd done a, a lot of you know what's well, Robinson does a lot of the, the ugly side but more so a, a James McLean type of role where he defended a lot and uh, he actually cleared a goal it would have been did. a clear goal he made a fantastic clear he did and I, it's actually not something I, I typically see in Alan George's play I mean he's normally the, the Wes Hoolan type the creator um, I think the Irish Messi they used to call him at <laughs> Notts County, but um, so he, he, and he was brought on in Denmark to to create the the equaliser, and I, I think that's why he was there to create something. But yeah, he did he tracked back quite a bit, yeah. made that great um, saving save yeah. the goal. And, yeah, uh, see, he made a difference. He definitely made a difference when he came on. Uh, he's definitely yeah. taken up that impact sub role a little bit. He was the same against Denmark. We came on the last ten minutes, and I think Mick definitely views him in that kind of way as a game changer. If we are chasing, oh, he definitely him, likes him. He tried to sign him at a uh, switch. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. fairly sure of. Um, oh, he he's a big fan. I yeah. think what I think what George suffers from from to some degree is his he doesn't have a clearly defined role in the same way that a Hendrick might. He, he's not like. Is he a wide man? Is he a number ten? Yeah, well, I think injuries yeah. haven't haven't helped him no. as well. To, to, yeah, to, no, it's been a combination of factors to try but... and get in the team anyway. Because every time he kind of gets near, and I know he's going to play against Gibraltar, I, I'm fairly sure. Or, or Bulgaria. Bulgaria. No, no, against Gibraltar, he, he missed out because he got injured against. Oh, Denmark. sorry, he was going to play. Oh, yeah, 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 the whole right, game. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I I feel as though he probably would have played that game. Uh, maybe even ahead of Robbie Brady, it seemed as though because Mick actually said it in the press conference. He said he would have he he wanted to to give me. He felt like he deserved it because he changed the game in our favour, which he did. Yeah. He won the foul. He got whipped he in the ball free, for Duffy. Free you know, so, yeah. so, so he he he's been, he's been brilliant, and I think at that point when he was actually brought on, we were very much under the coach. All of their players, by the keeper, were in our half, and they were just you know their yeah. centre halves were getting it, and they were just spraying it, and they really started tiring our players out and you know the three of our midfield obviously weren't playing a lot of games and match fitness is a massive issue within the squad at the moment I think more on the midfield I yeah. think everywhere else we're, we're, we're alright yeah we're okay at the back yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, McLean's playing break. regularly yeah. and um, in a different position yeah yeah, 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 but I thought, yeah. which we'll, we'll come to that in a minute yeah. but I thought, it, I thought he'd done really well like uh, in the last 10 minutes <laughs> other than that but, uh, <laughs> we'll come back to yeah. that anyway um, no but like just I thought Henrik played well Tired off kind of second half, which would have been natural if you're not playing. Heron done well uh, up to a point, but wasn't really like we were, we were getting pushed back. Which yeah, is not I don't, that I don't, it's not I don't natural think, again, you know. I don't think Conor Horan impacted the game as much as I w- would have hoped for. I, I thought Glenn Whelan. Yeah, I thought he was great. Yeah. I thought he was superb. And I, I, I am games. a fan. I know I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah. But he he was superb. Oh, I'm again. being a fan. Of yeah. I am too. Yeah, and uh, I thought he had a superb game. Um, and and he, he was probably the reason we weren't overrun, I thought. Yeah, well, he was throwing in yeah. tackles when he needed to as well. I, I, I remember a challenge he made on one of the Swiss players and he, he nearly clapped it into Shane Duffy. And it just broke with the play for that, for that, you know, it just kind of gave us a little bit of a breather, you know. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to say was I love the way Coleman, I think Duffy went down, I thought he was injured actually. 
and that would have been a huge blow for us. Remember, he got the rosary and beat Zayd around seven yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 his knee was. He fell, yeah. yeah. And then all the players crowded around him, and then I loved what Coleman just went out a bit for them and just kept pushing them and getting in their face and all. And I was just like, I love that. That's a what you want to see your captain yeah, yeah, do, yeah. you know, and, and stand up for your players or whatever. Darren Randolph just kind of come over and you know, pull, <laughs> pull him away. But I just thought, you know, at that point. You know, I actually to be fair, at that point I couldn't see a score and, and they were just getting more and more into it. Ultimately they got their goal and actually no, just before they got their goal, uh Mbolo uh slipped, slipped yeah. yeah, which was which he got in, we were got away with uh, We got away with a couple of those. I think had they had a little bit more composure, composure in front yeah. of goal, they they could have scored two or three. I yeah. think we I mean and we and did Seamus defend got, very Seamus, well. Seamus made a fantastic yeah, header, clearance yeah. header. Yeah, when it, it could very easily be an own goal. Yeah, I did. Uh, I ultimately think there was just that mo- mo- much momentum from de- from them that they ultimately it was going to break us down at, at some point. I, I I said I said already. I think that goal was coming. I yeah couldn't see us. Well, the warnings, so the like, danger yeah. signs were there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I'm sure many people back at home will empathise with this as well. Is the most frustrating thing about being an Irish fan is if we could play like we do when we're one nil down. Before we go one 0 down, <laughs> we'd be an incredible team. Yeah. I think there there is, and I don't know what the source of it is. I think there's almost a mentality. It might be a small country mentality or something, but whatever the mentality is, we almost don't believe in ourselves until we have to. Uh, and I, th- I I I think we we fell under the cost because of that mentality. Almost we we, we didn't have we didn't have the even maybe the self belief to go to to think that we could go one 0 up when I actually do think that we had a lot of the those kind of chances. That there there is definitely a need to. I, I don't know how we'd go about it, but I, I think there's definitely... so Our mentality needs to change. And this has been, for as long as I've been an Ireland fan, and I think way before I've been an Ireland fan, this has been an issue, is that we, we need to almost believe that we can go 1-0 up rather than wait till we fall 1-0 behind and start playing our game then. Because you could almost sense it. As soon as Shar scored that goal, uh, we started attacking more than what we'd done for the 73 minutes beforehand. Yeah, well, I do think it's interesting to, um, to touch on their goal because it was a very, very well worked goal. Yes. Like, I mean, it's hard to defend against this, just one touch, one touch, one touch, yeah. one touch, bang. And it was a great goal. You you have to give them credit for the goal. I mean, if we score on that, we'd be lauding it up for, for as long as we can, <laughs> to be yeah. fair. Um, but, but just touching on what you said there about us kind of going, going to go down, I asked James Coleman after the game, it's like, well, what is it? We seem to kind of go, go down and then really go at teams. And he goes, well, we seem... It seems to be a case when when you have that when you're a goal down, you just kind of have to play without fear and try and go for it. And you kind of you, you see where he's coming from. Yeah. Like we we like they pressed us back and just tired us out. But I thought from that moment, I thought one the crowd got back behind the team. You know we didn't Indeed. stay quiet. The, the, yeah. In the, fairness to the crowd though, they were immense from the get go. Uh, the place was rocking that uh, as far as I, I didn't feel like it was rocking like it was rocking you know no, from the, the goal of and from our goal mm. which we get to but I, I thought it was fairly average I think uh, it, in terms the of atmosphere is stuff. the best it's been I think since the Euros I, I, I think it started to die death under O'Neill and I think that this was probably as as good as I wasn't was amazed by the atmosphere I thought it was fairly no, average I, yeah it, I think in I think in and the if last you compare it to minutes, O'Neill then yes yeah <laughs> yes but even under O'Neill if you take games like Wales and, and Austria sure, when yeah, we, was, right, yeah. yeah especially when we were going at Austria it was pretty much mm. rocking as well I mean certainly by the end under O'Neill the atmosphere had gone and died yeah, yeah, yeah well, the football that was played was oh, the rest. well okay yeah, end, yeah, yeah, you yeah, call I, it that at yeah. the end <laughs> okay. it was like okay. no chances no goals yeah. it was horrible I mean I was disappointed the game wasn't sold out no I think 44,000 was probably still not a bad crowd no. but mm, yeah. Uh, yeah it was a decent enough atmosphere but it Certainly at the end, it yeah, was so, it was I mean, maybe we you can remember from the last 15 minutes, it was absolutely rocking once we got the goal and then it was... Yeah, well, that, we're, we're going to yeah. go because we, they sat back and then it was a case of uh, Howard came off, Hogan came on, I thought he made a difference up there as that, like to play with McGoldrick. Yeah, he played two he up made, top. Yeah, yeah, I thought he made a difference and then... I thought was the was the um, turning point in the game for us was the moment where it was their our corner sorry and uh, they think their keeper punched it clear and Bolo takes it around one of our defenders and McLean breaks his bollocks to get back and win it. I actually took a video of it, so I've actually tried a video into into this video. But uh, he wins the ball back against him and Bolo goes out for our throw in. From the throw in, then we I think Stevens gets it knocks it back to Randolph or, or Shane Duffy. He knocks it up the other end. It goes out for our throw. 
and then from, from that moment that's when uh, Glenn Whelan actually takes that gets in and, and strikes the bar, the bar which bar, everyone yeah. was like oh. I suppose everyone who 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 wants Glenn to Whelan. see Glenn Whelan get a, a little bit of props was hoping that goal goes in. Just, he, just he actually had a, what I thought was a great chance to shoot just before he did, that, and, and he, he gave it out to Stevens, and he yeah. didn't take the chance. And I was shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that's true. Cause he gave it out to Stevens. He whipped it back in, and then he came back out to him on the edge of the box, and then he did shoot. Okay. I think it's smash. that self belief thing, though. Again, I think our players are almost second second guessing themselves when it comes to shooting opportunities. Well, I think if Whelan had a shot. It did be the you know the the the, the way or yeah. the boost. well not at that point actually because we were chasing the game but uh, I think you know there's always the ironic cheers and stuff like that just towards him he gets stick for for not doing a whole lot wrong like he does his role that he's in there specifically to do you know in old regimes hit the ball almost bypassed him at times because it was not lot, lot yeah. long over the top okay. of him all the time. I think McCarthy style suits him. Yeah, what's he supposed to do with that? I think McCarthy, he can actually get on the ball. He can, He's a good passer of the ball. He's passing in the second half was, was very good, to be fair. And even Liam Brady said on commentary, or sorry, in, the, in RTE, that um, himself and McLean changed the game. But uh, then obviously, after his shot hits the bar, uh, and Babu run, tries to run down the wing with it. Now, if I was his manager, I'd be going mad. I'd just rose head. Yeah. But McLean shows all the willingness in the world, wins that ball back, gets across, you know, it deflects off anyone. I don't give a shit. Uh, it was a great bit of work. The ball hangs up perfectly, and it couldn't it couldn't have went any better from a goal trick. And I, was ne- I wasn't, I haven't been that happy to see someone score in such a long time because I yeah. thought he felt like he deserved the goal against Gibraltar and it wasn't really given to him. And you were speaking recently about a, a, a deflected goal and if it go, if it's striker, it's a, it should be a goal. I can't remember who that was. I think it was uh, Robinson. I think it was Callum Robinson's goal. Chelsea, uh, like, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted <laughs> to give him the one against Chelsea because I thought it was just on target. Yeah. Um, Look, you're not on the dubious goal. <laughs> <Yeah. thing, man. laughs> I give it. I give it to the striker every time, yeah, and the no. defender doesn't want it Absolutely. anyway. I think what's important to credit about our goal as well. Actually, I know he's been a much maligned player in the line in the Ireland squad since he's come in, but I think Scott Hogan did really well for that chance as well because I think he almost he, he took one of the defenders off yeah. McGoldrick. Yeah. He let McGoldrick make a bit more of a free. A free he, he freed up some space for McGoldrick to make that run for the header. Uh, and I think was it, was it a run because it looked like it was just hanging. I think it's it, just it, you know if if you look back at the highlights, I, I'm fairly sure. Now I'm, I'm only thinking of one angle that I that I watched. The video yeah, from, no, because when I just seen it just hung in the air for like an it eternity. Did, but, but he was waiting. If you watch the highlights, he was playing. He he was passing around like just outside the box yeah. a couple of seconds before the ball goes out. Oh, okay. okay. So it was somewhat of a time a, 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 a well timed header, um, and I think Hogan gave him the opportunity to be able to time that and get that space to score as well. So hopefully that's a bit of a turning point in his Ireland, Hogan's Ireland career as well. Uh, yeah, well, well certainly certainly for, for David McGoldrick, he needed a goal. And, yes. And that was... It was great, but the place brilliant. absolutely yeah. erupted. And you spoke about atmosphere then. I thought from that moment, the atmosphere was brilliant. And if you could have that sort of singing, chanting, Fields of Athenroy, come on, you boys in green, stand up for, your, uh, for the boys in green, all that stuff. If you had that going... For large parts of the game mm. and just intimidate the opposition because that's what what happened. I felt they they didn't have a lot going forward after that. We I thought pushed on Ooh, similar. Enough I don't know. I thought they, they they pushed us back again. Yeah, I didn't uh, think so. I think they, they got a corner or something. Yeah, other but than they, that, they, after the after the, after the equaliser, our yeah, our I think. Goal. I think they they pushed us back again, and uh, I wasn't take that Swiss I, top off. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't as I'll put it this way. I I I I get what you're saying, Gary, but I think I wasn't as terrified as yeah. I have been. Other, uh, no, I was, no, I was actually I, I, relatively yeah, confident. I, I, okay, I, I, I certainly I'll admit before the goal, I thought the goal was definitely coming. I didn't think a winner was their coming. goal now. Their goal okay, before yeah. they scored, I thought the goal was definitely coming. At one one. Okay, I was a little bit nervous. I would, this will be a fantastic point, and they, I thought we were pushed back a little bit, but I certainly didn't feel that we were going to score or anything like that. Um, once Shane I'd, Duffy had, once Shane Duffy's knee was okay, that was that was it for me. You know, he, he, for the last couple of minutes, I knew that we'd be fine. He, he's any, absolutely he, crucial. He, 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 yeah. he, he, <laughs> any ball would magnetize itself to his head. I I, 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 I trusted Shane Duffy now to not. Mm, and how, how good with he's been in man of the match performance once again but I just do the, think, go, the goal in Copenhagen don't yeah, forget yeah, yeah no but I just mean oh yeah, if, if, oh, yeah no, the I bigger games game, he was yeah, dropped against yeah. City you know uh, and uh, comes back in does a great job but we were delighted that he was dropped because he was fully fit Mick was delighted because he was fully fit but I just think as well you know I know we said in the in the preview that we would like to see or the starting 11 show that we would was it me or you 
Uh, I want to see Egan. But you can see why Kyo was in there. Yeah. I disagree. I wasn't happy with Kyo's performance. No? Um, I, I think uh, from reading kind of media reporting, I don't know if I've... I, I think my opinion is somewhat unpopular, but I think he... There, there was a couple of moments in that game where his passing and his pace let us down massively. There was... I think he Mbolo skinned him at one point. Uh, oh, that was for the, the George half. chance, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 George I, had, I, sorry, George Henry. I, I, I think... Yeah, I, but I think what sometimes yeah, what he I, lacks in, in in ability he makes up for defensively. Yeah, well, his I, I, positional I, sense I yeah. think is pretty. I don't good. think that's you something. Know, that's... I, I I don't think that's something Egan lacks though, uh, and I I, th- I think I probably would be definitely. Yeah, I, 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 I think we have a partnership at the moment though, and I I don't see that changing unless there's a well, an injury or something like. But that, that could change against Bulgaria, which is we, we, oh, we'll, well, we'll, no, we'll touch over that. That's different at a later story, point. Yeah. But, yeah. but that could be the start of a new partnership. But well, I I just wanted to say that. Because I said it before that I would have liked to see Egan now because he's playing Premier League football and he'll have more Premier League games under his belt now coming into the yeah. next round of games. But I still think that what you said was right is that when you have partnerships, and I'm sure we've all played football here, that if you have partnerships that you trust and you talk to people, they're constantly talking. James Coleman's solid at right back. You don't need any worries with him. Ed Stevens, I thought, much more improved in the second half. Um but he's ruled out now for the game against the yeah. uh, was it the George game? The George game. Yeah, he's ruled out. Game. McLean will probably go there or Cunningham. Um, Possibly Matt Doherty even at left back out of position. I don't know. Maybe. maybe yeah. Has, is Doherty fit for the? Or are you talking about for the next round of competitive? Oh, I'm talking yeah, about Georgia with Georgia. Yeah. So. Yeah. I also well, he wouldn't think, be suspended yeah. for the friendly. Like, yeah, 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 of for, course, uh, of course. For, um, the, for the Georgia game away. Yeah. I was surprised Ryan Manning. Wasn't in the. Uh, yeah, he's been the playing left back for He's QPR. been playing yeah. left back for QPR, and he's been playing pretty well in the championship. Yeah. Now he hasn't been lighting the place up, but for an yeah. Irish player, he's playing. But I, I think Mick said that. He's a four the, player at the moment. Mick said that that James McLean is the the option as the cover for Mendes Stevens. So you would have to think it'll be James will, will move back for Georgia. But yeah. I I I, I, I heard Steve Ward might come out of uh, retirement, I but I, I wouldn't like yeah, that. I, I Stephen don't think so. Ward. Stephen I don't Morgan. think he's the future. I yeah. think uh, Greg Cunningham wouldn't be a bad shout because uh, he's naturally uh, a left-back played Premier League last season. For something of an outside shout, I wouldn't rule out Leo Connor either. He's moved to Celtic. He's going to be hopefully getting some ga- game time up north and I think he is an excellently versatile player. I, I think he's, he's a great good. player. The problem is Celtic have signed about four full-backs, I think. Yeah, but as well yeah. as that, I think if you're going to do that, you're probably going to have to put Coleman left-back. He play, he, he, well, Leo Connor's played left back the whole way through the United youth setup as well. He's played right back and left back and defensive mid. So he's a lot of experience at left back. Mm, yeah, but oh, with top, with, with just for for top level, I don't see him getting in there. No, I don't think uh, so. For international think football, probably, probably, probably. Yeah. I, I, he's def- definitely one. I think you'll he's have class, four or five though. of that under twenty one side in the Coming next up. campaign. Uh, yeah. Possibly even under if we Kenny, got, yeah. uh, uh, possibly even if we got to the finals. You can you can see, see some of them in the them squad and both. possibly in the team. Yeah. But I, I don't see the likes of Leo Connor or Troy Parrott or Aaron, Aaron Connolly playing I think competitive Aaron games might. this year. Maybe I, Con- yeah. I think of Con- 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 yeah. Con- Con- City as well as scoring yeah. that goal. Yeah, yeah I think if there's any any two out of the um twenty ones that look ready from watching them the other night, it's uh, Malumbi and Connolly in my opinion. Yeah, uh, Malumbi's doing well at if Millwall he, as well on loan. Actually, consistent game time yeah. at Millwall, I think he's definitely a shout. Yeah. So. Well, uh, that's been it for the for the final word. Then I suppose we've we've touched on everything. Uh, maybe Alan Brown come on for for McGoldrick. He got a stand ovation and rightly so. But yeah, uh, yeah look, it's a, it's an, it's a positive result, which I suppose at the end of the game you would have taken. You'd have taken it before the game. I was hoping for a win because I felt like they were uh, key players. I think it's going to be difficult now, but. We'll come up, we'll, we'll know more, I suppose, as the week goes on regarding uh, the Georgia and Denmark, Georgia Denmark game, game yeah. which is being played right now. And Mill all as we speak. It could be, <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, but I, I think we're not in as bad as a position as. I, I think we're in a decent position going forward in that I think if we win against Georgia, which is a taller ask than we might have imagined, yeah, no, we, have, we have to win. Yeah. But if we win against Georgia, win, yeah. draw against Denmark and Switzerland, and there's. In the Denmark versus Switzerland game, if one of them wins, if that, that, do it, it. then yeah. that'll do it for us. Yeah. And that isn't well, hopefully a crazy prospect. Hopefully it's Switzerland win. I think that's more I, realistic. I, I, I don't know about Switzerland going to... I'd like to see Switzerland go to Copenhagen and win. That would be my preference. <laughs> um, I don't think that's realistic. I don't know. Um, Why is it not realistic? 
It could happen. I don't. I don't think it's probably the most likely. Yeah, maybe it's realistic. Like it's, it's not on. I suppose it's not unrealistic. Yeah. But it's. I but, don't think it's the likely outcome. I think Denmark have a seriously yeah, good side. I, I think probably um, the best realistic outcome that we can hope for is Denmark beat Switzerland. We beat Georgia and we draw against Denmark and Switzerland. I think that's our best path towards the qualifiers as we speak. I'd like to see. It. I'd like to see Switzerland uh, just go the whole way well, without, oh, so, without beating us. I guess I'm talking the whole realistic. Yeah. I'm talking about the more realistic prospect, but. Having watched the 5 1 a couple of years ago, I would love if Switzerland went the, and knocked Denmark out. The, the problem we have is I think if Denmark do beat Switzerland, then if we don't get a result in Geneva, a win against Denmark probably may not be enough as well. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's my concern. But anyway, yeah. uh, anyway we're, we're kind of hypothetically happens. speaking yes. right now. We're, we're, um, we're, we're in, look, there are three teams for two places in with a, a great shout at the yeah. moment. and... We'd have, taken the, we'd have bitten our arms off for this at the start of the qualifying campaign. Absolutely. Especially uh, on the life under our own. At the end, um, to be where we are now is yeah. in a healthier position. Yeah. And, and the, the state of you know players coming through is good. One yeah. more thing, as we talk, I think given results such as Portugal winning in, in Serbia, uh, we are, I think, almost 100% guaranteed a playoff if we don't make the top two as well. The way the other groups are panning out, so it's good to have that in our back pocket. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just got news that uh, it was a draw uh, in Tbilisi. Yeah, which is fantastic news. So, <laughs> yeah. Barry, what was the state of play you were telling us just before the video? So my my understanding now is, um, I'm pretty certain of this off the top of my head. A win against Georgia and two draws will definitely uh, qualify us, or a win against Georgia and win either, either of the other two ones, games yeah. will definitely qualify so us. So if well. we repeat our form from those teams in the games we have played against them we'll go through as one yeah the, two more teams. two more one one victories will That'll do us do against <laughs> Switzerland <laughs> the, the Irish way yeah. <laughs> fair play Gary um, let us know your thoughts in the comments um, on I suppose Ireland's fixture against uh, or uh, draw results sorry uh, against Switzerland uh, don't forget to check out the subreddit or, or Koi Big you got it there John and uh, don't forget to give the lads a follow are you, are you on Twitter I am on Twitter as well um, I'll give that to you after the game if you want to put it in a yeah. thumbnail right thing. No, right. what? Are, yeah, no worries. And he's on now, Gary, by now. Okay. If you haven't followed him, check him out. He's not on Instagram, <laughs> though, for the, for the younger generation. But uh, no, I'll huge thanks, guys. As well. okay. <laughs> no, huge thanks, lads, for coming on. Of course. And, uh, thanks for having us. Don't forget to check out now the rest of our content. We're coming up to the Bulgaria game, the preview, and the Start 11 show. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.